Diamond conducted this study on water and sanitation in 2009, and uh, we wanted to go back to all the participating gram panchayats, about 172 in Karnataka, uh, to share our uh, results. And also, we had in fact made action plans based on the findings, and we're hoping that the gram panchayats will take those plans and. Uh, you know, uh, take action on them. So we had done a lot of elaborate exercise to plan, uh, you know, actions for each gram panchayat and plan one day each with panchayats to explain our findings and then also to develop some kind of an action plan. <coughs> but I think the experience wasn't very good. We were not really get, we didn't really get the kind of response we wanted from the panchayats. And the panchayats, uh, I would say 70 to 80 percent panchayats were just seemingly not interested in even very critical findings on say quality of water being very bad, there wasn't enough traction in the panchayats which we could find to actually take these things forward. So we kind of wanted to get it further into this and then decided that uh, if the agenda of water and quality also has to be taken forward, the first thing or one of the key things to be resolved is governance and that's how RGM got into this project. Um, so till now I think we've been, uh, we've had a lot of discussions on uh, devolution, what should the gram panchayats do, what should uh, uh, this particular program, you know, the responsibility of GPs is this and the PRIs is this. For some time, let's wear the hats of a gram panchayat member. This presentation is primarily on uh, what a couple of questions it tries to address. Is uh, what is my incentive as a panchayat member to actually engage in this entire exercise of decentralization? And related to that is what are uh, the, what is the facilitating environment that is being created for the panchayat member to actually deliver what we want him or her to deliver? Hmm? So, uh, yeah, this is I think something which is everyone's familiar with. We've had a very strong directional framework. We have had the 73rd amendment. We've had substantial financial outflows to the panchayats. We've had SIRDs in each state. Uh, uh, to basically dedicated to panchayat uh, capacity building. And we've had constant efforts in strengthening the process of planning, accounting, etc. I mean, integrated planning process, panchatantra, etc. But still, as we've seen the last couple of days, and miles to go before the local authority that um, able to deliver their goods. And we attribute it to lack of capacity. The question is, whose capacity actually? Is it our capacity or the capacity of people who are formulating the framework? or is it the capacity of the local elected body or uh, functionaries? So I would conjecture to say that I don't think we have designed the system, implementation system for success really. <coughs> Just giving you a brief of uh, Argem's project, we, this started in 2010, late 2010, Jan 2011 to now, it's going to finish uh, the two phases by the end of this year. We are looking at this project as trying to see the gram panchayats as institutions and how do you build a framework that the gram panchayat can actually become a stronger institution. Um, we thought we'll take this um, process to two panchayats as a real-time change management process and we are working with them very closely. And of course, we want to leverage local strengths and capacities. Partners, um, IGM is a program manager. You may know that it's a registered trust. Uh, with a personal endowment from uh, Ms. Rohini Nelikani. Uh, two uh, panchayats in Kola district in Karnataka and Chikbalapur districts in Karnataka. So these are the two panchayats who are participating in this exercise. Our NGO partner is Grama Vikas, uh, separate from Gram Vikas here. Uh, Grama Vikas is in Karnataka and also Foundation for Ecological Security. Uh, Mr. Raghunandan, who is a former Joint Secretary Government of India, is an advisor to our project. And we also have a very uh, different kind of a partner who is an HR consultant because we believe institution building does require human resource and change management uh, <coughs> capacity. So we have partnered with uh, HR consultants from Delhi for now. So um, the 73rd amendment primarily puts three mandates on panchayat members, right? It's participation, it is service delivery, and also to act as a unit of local self-governance. And uh, this triple mandate is actually coming to rest mostly on the Gram Panchayat more than even the Block and the Zilla Panchayat is what we have experienced. Panchayats in Karnataka um, have a budget to the extent of about a crore. And uh, by default or by design, the accountability of service delivery does not lie with the line departments. It's actually coming to rest on the Panchayat member. 
So the ZP or the Taluka Panchayat, they pass on the responsibility to uh, one government officer, which is a secretary in the Panchayat, who is a lone official there, who then uh, kind of tries to uh, mobilize elected members to you know take on responsibilities of various programs and schemes. And then there's a reverse pressure, which is uh, from the citizens. And now we are not only talking of water and sanitation. As you know, there are 29 functions. And uh, these are all the functions of, of regarding which there is immense pressure. In fact, we work with panchayat members who have said there is so much pressure uh, because I live in the same village. Whenever there is a street light which does not work, somebody comes to my house. When the pump is not working, somebody comes to my house. We don't end up, some people say we don't sleep properly or we end up spending our own money to address citizen issues. So there is a lot of pressure on the panchayat member when we are talking of decentralization and revolution, which we need to kind of acknowledge and accept before we start uh, looking at the broader framework. <coughs> uh, they, I mean, they are the first time elected members. So the 70 to 80 percent members in a panchayat are first time elected. I think that's uh, in the case of most panchayats. What support should they get? They should obviously have capacity building support. They should have financial and technical supports because these are not people who are qualified engineers and doctors or administrators, right? So they should get financial and technical support from the government line departments, programs and schemes. They should have some staff to actually assist them because um, who is supposed to be doing all the work? And uh, so there should be government staff and there should be gram panchayat staff. Now let's see what he gets. He gets one or two training programs in the entire five years. As somebody pointed out, they are not really targeted programs, they are very generic programs. Line departments, I think the story is pretty clear. Where do you go? Who do you contact? What is the scheme? Lot of non-clarity, lot of confusion. There is a lone secretary as far as the panchayat is concerned. In Karnataka, there is also a panchayat development officer. <coughs> and uh, the MGP employed staff, yes, they, are, they can have as many people as possible, but they have to pay <coughs> them out of their own revenues. What is the revenue status of Gram Panchayat? All of us know. The revenue base is the citizens of uh, the Gram Panchayat whose income standards are not so high that we can expect enormous revenue collection or tax collection. Now look at uh, the leadership. We talk, there are some very good Panchayats, there's no doubt because of strong leadership. But how does the leadership get governed? Most time the seats are reserved. So there, in the both the Panchayats that we work with, the first time, the uh, first Sarpanch was a woman who did not speak for two years. So hmm. that is the leader that we are talking about. So there is an informal leader in the panchayat, but that is not good enough, right? I mean, the adhyaksha or the upadhyaksha is supposed to take the mantle forward, as we say. And finally, we are not compensated for uh, time and resources spent. They are farmers, they are teachers, the people who are in the uh, panchayat body, elected members, spend on an average five to six hours if they are a good member. And so that is opportunity cost spent out of, you know, uh, the time should be spent in the farm or in other job. That is not accounted for at all. We are expecting the person to work for free. So this is the framework that we are creating to have a very strong decentralization framework and which I think we should take note of. So are we creating the right incentives? I have no money. I have spent a lot of money getting elected as a panchayat member. So what is my first thing I want to do? I want to get the money back, right? I mean, because I'm not a very rich person. So are we creating positive incentives that yes, you should understand schemes and programs efficient service delivery to citizens, build a strong institution, structured planning, implementation, all this is an expectation from Gram Panchayat members, am I right? This is what all our programs are actually finally resting on, that this is what the GP will do. Or, this is what in the system the GP members end up doing, a lot of them. They take over as contractors, they start making a fast buck because they spend a lot of money in the election uh, time, uh, they create strong political protectors because otherwise how will they win the next election? So the entire system of incentives, the framework I would submit is not something that we are really creating for success. Now let us look at the issues that Gram Panchayat faces. And where does the improvement opportunity lie? Does it lie at the Gram Panchayat or elsewhere? There is non-clarity regarding exact nature of obligations and responsibilities of the government line departments. What needs to improve? Obviously the transparency of the administrative system group of panchayat members uh, responsible for implementation of devolved functions. No individual portfolios and no scope of specialization. So the set of people says, Gram Panchayat has to do this. If you look at NREGA, if you look at NRHM, if you look at drinking water, the Gram Panchayat as a body is supposed to deliver. 
there is no structure within an organization and all of us belong to organizations here, yeah? there are structures. We individuals are responsible and therefore accountability increases. So again, what needs to improve? We need to improve the institution building structure. The third <coughs> point is on gram panchayats actually spend money out of their own pockets. Yes, good gram panchayats don't do, they've got some systems, but many gram panchayats, and we've spoken to many of them, there's people spend money out of, the po out of their pockets and they get reimbursed as later six to eight months later because there is no money which is coming in the panchayat. Now what needs to improve? We should have a proper impress system which any organization, simple as that should have, an impress system and operational guidelines. Specific issues of uh, correction of BPL list, decisions on additional public tax which is always there after you put a uh, pipeline, the PHED puts certain pipelines and then the uh, gram panchayat has to double them because of the demand from the citizens. Or the inadequacy of gram thana land for, uh, for allocation of housing sites. These are decisions which the Gram Panchayat member is supposed to take because there's pressure from the citizens, but he is not empowered to take. What we need to change is this incentive structure. And finally, there is little knowledge among Gram Panchayat members. Most of them are first time elects uh, on various programs, schemes, responsibilities, and power. I think so. Most of these things apply as much to water and sanitation as to health and edu education. So therefore, I'm not really pinpointing what's that, where, where but it applies. Where is it from state to state? Many states have really started. I come from a state where they say the uh, decentralization system has almost been very successful. Can I cover this? That is what I am told many times. <laughs> so, of course, it's not... Those who are not in Karnataka understood this too. Alright. Anyway, so, uh, so, therefore, basically, the submission is that we need to re-engineer the implementation framework. I am not talking about the directional framework, which we've said pretty much uh, the right directions have been set. and. Uh, uh, the 73rd amendment is there, there is a there two lakh fifty thousand panchayas, election takes place in time. I mean I think there's a lot of things that we can boast of. But when it comes to implementation, I, sub I think there's a lot of things to improve. And uh, there are no capacity issues. Is it five minutes left? You said fifteen plus five or what? Uh, well, fifteen minutes. Okay. Fifteen plus five minutes. There are no capacity issues, but they can be easier targeted and addressed with more administrative <coughs> transparency at higher government levels and better institutional design at the Gram Panchayat level. Uh, we are working to a larger, uh, to a stronger Gram Panchayat institution using the organization development model where we are looking at a successful organization should have a purpose, role clarity, a proper structure, and its position properly placed in a larger framework or a systemic framework. So this is what we worked on and these are very quick things which we can discuss or anybody can have. We did process mapping to arrive at role clarity of all these 17 processes including water and sanitation. And we arrived at an organization structure and then we are now hand holding the Gram Panchayats to work in this structural framework uh, for implementation. This is a structure which is uh, one of the things that we are, uh, that's been, the GPs have accepted. This is a structure as it is which uh, the act uh, which the framework prescribes. We said that let's have some more specializations in terms of individuals taking responsibility. So there are certain portfolios which uh, people have taken up. So there's somebody called, you can see the red line, which is the head amenities, which is a uh, person looks after drinking water, looks after cleanliness of roads and drains, and preventing it. But we believe with this kind of a structure, what happens is that you are able to target, uh, there are individuals who take up responsibility and therefore capacity building becomes easier. Uh, accessing government programs becomes easier, uh, a whole lot of advantages can uh, go for. If the heads are not available from the panchayat, one of the panchayats has actually sought people from outside the panchayat to become heads of these uh, portfolios. The GP response has been fairly heartening. There are some nice comments which I'll skip because we have short of time, but generally people have responded very well. Uh, the framework potentially builds specialization as well as pushes for accountability <coughs> to higher government levels, which is again a big issue. So each head assumes accountability for a set of functions, interfacing with government departments to fulfill the responsibility effectively. His or her knowledge of schemes, programs and funds increases. Because of that, it triggers more awareness and pushes for higher transparency and accountability from government departments. And finally, the state training efforts, the SIRDs and various other programs can become more targeted to build capacity. Uh, so, therefore, rather than creating a cadre of panchayat employees, which we find very difficult to retain and recruit, as you've seen in, even in case of PDOs in Karnataka, we are actually trying to utilize and enhance skills of local people. 
this last two slides, this framework is not really sustainable without a larger change. Mm. So if you look at, uh, we have to have other institutions. So the Panchayati Raj authorities will have to review the Gram Panchayat structure and work processes to enable it to, de uh, to uh, deliver the devolved functions and as well as the agency service delivery as well as the governance functions. The line departments, I think somebody spoke of contracts, but there needs to be contracts with the line departments. The Gram Panchayat and the departments uh, should have a contract saying this is what you have, your responsibility is, this is what my responsibility is, your <coughs> obligations and responsibilities should be fairly spelled out. And because we are performing functions on your behalf, we should be paid actually a service fee or an agency uh, because where does the money come from to uh, actually implement each of these things? So the Gram Panchayat I submit should be paid some kind of a service fee for delivery of functions. The Panchayati Raj institutions should create provision for compensation. We are not saying pay salary, but GP should be able to compensate its members from the revenue. Possi it's possible if only if GP's revenue base is become expanded. It's not only the citizens of the Gram Panchayat, but it's able to charge service fee to the various uh, government departments that it works for and works with. And finally, the SIRDs to enable a more demand-driven knowledge uh, support. So the GPs should have a role in deciding the kind of programs that the SIRD, SIRDs have to uh, deliver. And if members have specific responsibilities, a more targeted development uh, effort can happen. And that's it. Thank you.